Good morning, morning Fort McMurray with Buffalo and the rest of the world. You've tuned in to the Max City Morning Show. I'm your host, Elliot Pierre, and we're going to start today's episode off the same way we start every episode off, with a moment of gratitude. I know you could be doing a million other things with your time, and the fact that you're spending with us truly does mean the world to me, so thank you. On that note, Tanner, hit him with the intro. How's it going, you guys? It's Jake White, JJW, uh, coming at you from uh, Norrell Toyota in Fort McMurray. Uh, just wanted to say hi and come on down, check the place out. Hi, my name's Richard. I'm the service manager here at Norrell Toyota. Hi there, I'm Adam. Uh, I'm here at Norrell Toyota. I'm a product advisor. Hi, I'm Cass. I'm the appointment coordinator. Happy to help you. Hey, it's Keith Simpson here. I'm the general manager of Norrell Toyota, soon to be Fort McMurray Toyota. Pretty excited for our new dealership. As you've seen, you met all my staff. These guys are all my family. We're here to take care of you. Come on down and be part of our family. And we are back. Big shout out to Neural Toyota, our title sponsor for today's episode. We really do appreciate your ongoing support. As everybody at home knows, I do not introduce my guests because they can do a better job of that than myself. So sir, can you please tell everybody at home who you are and what you're about? How's it going? I'm Mike Jones. Work for CMHA with Buffalo, uh, Boston Communications, Tipsy Trivia, Fort McMurray, Onstage Productions, uh, yeah. yeah. And we were supposed to film uh, something for our Tell Us Story Hive grant, yeah. but we don't got the time today. But I wasn't canceling. We're all I, busy people. Yeah, busy I wanted people. to talk to you about your event though, and I want to give that some sh major shine. Mm -hmm. Please, let's talk about Rock the Rails. Absolutely, yeah. We were <clears throat> dealt a pretty brutal hand this year in terms of the weather, but yeah. uh, did not expect it to snow in June. That definitely was not anticipated, but yeah. it still ended up being a pretty awesome event. So. Yeah, man, people came. I was there both nights. Yeah. I, I didn't stay that late on the Saturday yeah. Because I went to a Filipino fundraiser at oh, nice. Rewind. Okay. But I was there pretty late on uh, Friday and it was yeah. a good time. We man. had a great crowd out Friday. Saturday was crazy. Yeah, it was. Um, we had about 3,000 people through the door throughout the day on Saturday. Wow. Um, but that was that number was taken before the headliner and we had a lot of people come like from the Oilers game just to see a 30-0. Yeah. And they went on a, just after 9, 9.30 something like that. So. Who's that indigenous group that was playing on the Friday? Uh, the opening band? It was uh, the hip hop band? Yeah. Oh, ABO. Ooh, They're awesome. You've never they, seen them before? I saw them last year. Yeah. Like, I caught them. Yeah. And then, like, I was like, man, I like these guys. And th then they came back again this year, and they really like. Yeah, we had them in our charity jam this year. They actually played a random set at Black Horse. Yeah. Uh, Max knows where these band was playing here, and they're like, hey, you guys want to just do a set while we're on break, anyways? Come yeah. out. And uh, they did, and they're they're, they're freaking awesome, and they've been just trying to get their name out there and get the brand out there. Yeah, so where are yeah, they they're from? they're from Fort Mackay. Oh no yeah, shit! Absolutely. So yeah. Oh, I gotta link up with those guys. Man. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're wicked. They're, they're good dudes, and they're always down to do stuff. Yeah. You should get Blair or Felix. Get them, one of them on the, yeah. on the show, man. Felix is running for like council up there and stuff too. Okay. Like he's very involved on the political side as well. Yeah. And then he has the hip hop. You know, he's he's killing it. They one all of them, are. They, like I don't know how they stood, but the one in the middle, not the one who was sitting down the whole time, but the one next to. Oh, he's in a wheelchair. Yeah. Yeah, the one in the wheelchair. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know that until afterwards. I'm yeah. Like, Why is that guy sitting down the whole time? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, then you, later you on, see I'm him like, carry oh. him off the stage. Like, yeah. oh, he's in a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah. that makes a lot of sense, but. Their flow was yeah. unbelievable. And then uh, Bubbins, and she works at Yeah, that's the, it. It was a girl. Yeah, she her works at the radio station sick. in Fort Mackay as well. No so she, that's kind of her, her side hustle. But she's amazing. She's and amazing. I think what happened, it originally it was just Felix and Blair, yeah. which are kind of the two bigger guys, right? And they're just on the sides. That was that was there. It was sort of a duo act. Yeah. And then uh, she would open for them a bunch. And she's yeah. she's a couple years younger than they are. Okay. And they were like, "This girl's amazing. We need to get her." Yeah. I mean, I feel like I'm telling their whole story. They should, you, you guys got to get the guys on to yeah, tell the yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. they they just like they they recruited her and they're like, "Let's get in the band." And then they got yeah. Curly as well. And now they've got a full full four piece. That's and crazy. They're, they're That's a amazing. Year. It's 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 taken them like they were great before, but it's taken them to a whole nother level now. Do do they perform outside of like the wood? Buffalo area? Uh, I think they've done a couple shows here and there, but yeah, they're they're just trying to get their roots going, and they still. Yeah. Have, I mean, I think they all have full time jobs and everything, and families yeah. and kids yeah, and course, stuff. So, but uh, yeah, I, I think they they've definitely got the talent to yeah. do it, and they've been getting a lot of radio play and some indigenous stations throughout Canada. I think so. Nice, and they got the crew as well. Like people showed up for them. Yeah. They're like they, they're very popular. People yeah. are people are hyped for them. Yeah. They've, they've got a big crowd going on. So. Yeah, that that was the one thing because they like open like you said openers on Friday. Yeah, and like all of a sudden there was a bunch of people when we showed up and we're like, yeah, oh 
okay. And then yeah, when yeah, they yeah. left, like the crowd went with them. We're like, oh. And then and there then was they ended a, up coming back. But. Yeah, little mon- well, yeah, because we have the breaks in between the bands, right? And yeah, yeah, little yeah. monkey poo had a crowd too. That was uh, it's, uh, Trevor Butler's son, actually. Oh, really? He's amazing. Yeah, and he was on first, and he had the Burger King outfit going on. So cool. I only caught a tiny piece of his set because I had to go pick somebody up at the airport. Yeah, but they nice were song. amazing. Yeah. Yeah, and then. How were the competitions? I didn't get to see any of the competitions. We, uh, yeah, you wouldn't have got to see anything on Friday because yeah. the park was soaking. Like yeah. it snowed that it snowed, morning. It, it was, it was like, so wet, it was so slippery. Yeah. Um, we tried our best, we couldn't make it happen, but uh, we got back on site. As I think we were there at 9 a.m. Saturday morning, tarping the whole park again, getting the dryers out. Uh, shout out United Rentals was there. They had HVACs, that are, uh, uh, the big, the back, the big, the big ass vacuums. Yeah, for yeah, better, yeah. better yeah. term. Oh, Hydro shop back. vac. Shop vac is what shop, I'm looking for. Oh, yeah. shop vac. Shop okay. vacs, hydro vacs. Yeah, that kind yeah. of thing. So sucking all the, there was a bunch of big puddles up. We had tarps. We were drying it out. We had big jet heaters from Cahill Rentals out there. Okay. And I, I can't say enough good things about all our community partners at home. Yeah. Awesome they were and making sure that these kids would be able to have a competition. Yeah. Even though it was a little chilly, they had to wear their hoodies. So, kid, there was obviously kids still rocking around in t-shirt and shorts because that's what kids do in, yeah. in, in January, never mind in June, but yeah. you know. Yeah, well, it's snowing. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah. we were prepping, when we got on site that morning. Uh, our stage was already built, but Encore Tents was there putting up Mike McQuilter and the guys were setting up all the tents. And we had Lee and everyone from Westward, Terry from United, putting all these generators up and trying to figure out where they're gonna go. And then Cahill, Dan had all the heaters yeah. and just trying to assemble them and it was like, it's like we're all in our winter jackets. We had to yeah. go digging out of the basement to find because it was like, what the hell is this? It's June. Yeah. You guys are nuts, man. Like, you put on, like, a real thing. I mean, like, postponing it just wasn't an option at that point. It was like, we'll do the best we can. But yeah. we got, like, you know, we've got bands booked that are yeah. coming in from out of town. Like, Authority Zero, um, Ill Scarlet, and Other Joe, they all had tours built around this show. So yeah. there's no way we could have moved it. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad we didn't. It actually meant more, I think, that the people that came out did. Yeah, did showed up. It, was it wasn't just it. like, yeah, we'll wander down. The weather's nice. The weather's crap. We should yeah. stay inside. We should be watching the Oilers game or something like that. But yeah. everybody came out still. So. Well, I'm such a space cadet. Like, I didn't even know the Oilers were playing. I yeah. didn't even know it was a Stanley <laughs> Cup. Yeah. So I'm out there, <laughs> and I'm talking to somebody, and they're like, hey, man, you made it out tonight. Like, you didn't, not looking at the game. And I'm like, I'm like there's a game on? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what rock do I live underneath? Yeah. But, like, it was was cool and like a lot of the people that were there like I grew up with and went to high school with yeah like, it's like a big high school reunion for yeah. everybody we had a ton of people come up from uh, Calgary this year really we had, I mean well we booked 50 hotel rooms so you know we had about 100 and some because they were all double rooms so it was about 100 or so uh, musicians and athletes from out of town and by athletes I mean like the guys that are judging and stuff like that yeah, yeah. the rumors guys and the hazel guys yeah and then we had another uh, probably another hundred people from Edmonton and Calgary that came up that just wanted to see these bands and wanted to have a reunion and obviously the Joey D night on Saturday so Claudia DeLusong uh, who's uh, Joey's sister of course lives in Calgary so her and Kimmy and a couple other people drove up I saw, uh, Lisa too. They drove yeah, up specifically. Yeah, I saw for the her event. and I was like, "Hey, how are you doing?" I yeah. didn't know she moved to Calgary. Yeah, she's. Oh, she oh. lives. I mean, see, yeah, she lives in, in southern Alberta, so oh, she's cool. definitely not in Fort McMurray anymore. Yeah, but. her and Kim were out there. Yeah, so they both yeah. drove up. It was funny. We were just hanging out with them uh, two weeks before in Vegas. They were at punk rock bowling. Okay. So And they were going again in LA to see No Effects with that crew as well. So it was, cool. it was. These are people that go to festivals in like Vegas and LA, and they're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. "We're going to Fort Mac. We're yeah. going to the Fort Mac Festival." So That's we're building something awesome. cool here. I think. Yeah, you really are, man. And like, it's a huge undertaking. Not to toot our own horn too much, but yeah. Yeah, no, you should. Like, the amount of tents, the gear, the stage, Mm -hmm. like, because me and Tanner throw our things, right? And I'm looking around, I'm like, Nope, I never want to get this. Yeah, the logistics, like, the fencing for AGLC, you gotta fence man. the whole area. Shout out to Vista Ridge though, so much easier. Before the rules were, and it wasn't even Vista Ridge couldn't even help us then because the rules were you needed eight feet fencing. Yeah. And I've always been a believer of when it comes to like beer gardens and stuff, and it's like, oh yeah, we have people act out all the time. It's like, yeah, because you're caging them in like animals. You yeah. cage people like animals, you treat people like animals, they're gonna act like animals. Right. So that was the old rules, and we had to get, uh, it was some belt rentals were always great for us for years. We would, but we'd have to lug it all out in these giant construction fences and set them up and secure them and oh my god I, I you know so many fingers lost and like just yeah. like fingernails and everything just from lugging that stuff out and it was not comfortable and not fun yeah uh, and then the rules relaxed last year so we were able to get a stadium license thanks to Canadian Brewhouse for that 
um, and then Vista Ridge, their snow fencing is just—it's so much easier. But yeah. we couldn't get that without our our, uh, our man Ty Tyrone Palmer is the absolute MVP of Rock the Rails. Okay. Uh, he just gets his buddies out, a couple of his friends out, yeah. and he just goes and builds. This gets the entire red fence in everywhere. Gets the hammer, boop, 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 yeah. knocks it in the ground, yeah. and it's just a seamless process. Yeah, so, man, that's awesome. Without a volunteer like Tyrone, shirt off your back kind of guy. Yeah. He's yeah. nonstop. Yeah. You know, anytime we need something, he's like, I'll lug that tent over, man. He's yeah. he's uh, such a such a yeah, shirt off your back kind of guy. That's awesome. And then like with all these bands, like how do you get in contact with them? Are you going through their agents, managers? Like yeah, um, for certain ones, yeah. I think like um, we looked at a couple of headliners, and Authority Zero uh, came up as an option, and we tracked down their headliner, and uh, they were actually already building a couple of Canadian dates as it was. Yeah. So they had already had an Edmonton show booked and everything, and it was like the week after our festival, so it wouldn't have worked out. Yeah. But they're like, you know what, we can make this work. We'll add in some Red Deer and High Level and places they've never been in a long time. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that worked out really well for us, and hopefully for those smaller towns too, they got some extra shows. Yeah. Um, and a couple of other guys, I've friends with face, uh, on Facebook, like Suave from El Scarlet. So we had talked about getting them up last year but for Friday night, but it just the budget wasn't there. And so we were able to work it out this year. Yeah. And our buddy JFK down in Edmonton built a routing around it. So they did a couple of underpays, underplays, they call them, yeah, in yeah. like smaller venues that they would normally uh, not be able to play in. Right. Because uh, it's too big, right? Yeah. Uh, so they were able to do those. And then, um, yeah, and then, you know, a couple of, another Joe had reached out and they wanted to play and they hadn't been up here since 1998. Um, and then... A few friends of Joey, obviously, we got, you know, Fire Next Time comes every year. We try to get them up. And then the big one was, uh, this year was the first year we ever did. We had so many people asking to play, we got to make this fair. So we put in an artist submission portal, uh, and this is the first time we've ever done that. And we got bands, we had over 50 bands apply, a couple from Fort McMurray. Um, I mean, most of the ones from Fort McMurray, we'd already kind of approached, like, yeah, you're playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we had bands from Vancouver, we had uh, bands from Winnipeg, I think there was one band from Ontario. Yeah. So it was basically all across, all across Canada, we had bands applying. Oh, and uh, I believe of those bands, there was three that were selected from that specifically, and two of them drove up, uh, both from Vancouver. So the, the, the wow. Maroons and uh, Die Job who were absolutely amazing. We felt yeah. like that album was so good. We li I listened to that album and I'm like, these guys want to play our festival? Okay, yeah. awesome. Let's do it. Yeah, that's sick, man. It's so cool to see like that grow mm -hmm. because that's like, to me, a representation of like the work that you put in for everything else. Right. From like the trivia going bar to bar, like you build a foundation and then all of a sudden when you throw your thing, yeah. people are like, we get, yeah, yeah I get, we get friends that'll come out and volunteer and run the merch table, even though I know they, they're they not, that's not their style of music. That's right. But I think for everyone that is their style of music, yeah. this is their Christmas. Yeah. It's, this is their, yeah. you know, this is their biggest, biggest weekend of the year for yeah. them. So it, we, uh, we take that job seriously and we want to make sure they have a blast. It's not my kind of music at all. Yeah. Like, but it's the atmosphere, right? And it goes yeah. so well, like, you know, you couldn't what? have a skateboard contest and God bless country music, but you couldn't yeah. have like no. a country artist playing a skateboard festival. Yeah. It just doesn't make sense. I love it. It's one yeah. of those, it's, it's an event uh, that I make sure every year I go to. Yeah. It's like, that is equivalent to me as the Banff Mountain Film Festival here. Mm -hmm. It's just one it's of those another one of my favorites. you have to too, go yeah. to. You have to go, you and can't like, miss it. That the fact that you like pull it off, even like in the weather that it was, I was like, yeah. it just goes to show how many people in this community respect what you do, man. Thanks, man. Yeah, because it's a cool, cool thing. So yeah, the like I was saying, when me and Tanner were looking over at like the facilities and the production and everything, I was just like, this man had to work to make yeah. this happen. I mean, We've got we've got a committee. Um, it's the last two years, uh, and they've helped me out in the past as well. But it's yeah. it's myself, Michelle Lansidel, uh Darren Eiler, Dan Lipton, and then we added in Katie Cooper as well this nice. year from uh, Earls and Black Dress Events. So awesome. uh, they are, deserve equally as much credit uh, yeah. for helping that to festival to happen. They're they're there on site all the time. Darren's back and forth between there and the banquet because he's yeah. running the van the bands there as well. Right. And uh, and then the logistics. It's like it's. So much work that goes into it, and so much preparation, and Michelle especially is yeah. keeping the keeping it grounded and like doing all the 
the, the harder stuff like the insurance and the registrations and how the liabilities work for yeah. the riders so we don't get sued and yeah you know and making sure that all the logistics and then Dan of course is, is big on the uh, not only did he come through huge yet again uh, last year it was because we needed air conditioning and this year it was because we needed heat right but with Cahill and getting us uh, heat and yeah. being able to heat out um, the beer gardens and the stage and the hospitality tent so we could have everything working and then having um, but he's also uh, he was a big skateboarder growing up mm. so he was he's in charge of a lot of the competitions right and we've gone from just asking a couple of our buddies that used to ride back in the day be like hey you want to judge and they're like yeah but we don't know how to do it legit yeah. we'll just be like that kid was awesome he's the best yeah. so now we get these guys where we actually get rumors skateboards and uh, this is our first year officially we're accredited Alberta action sports okay so um, all of our results get tabulated with theirs, and people, our kids can go to Edmonton, Calgary, High, Red Deer, wherever, and do competitions yeah, yeah. and build up their rankings and stuff. So, cool. So it's an officially legit uh, judging system, judging process. That's now. awesome, man. Well, listen. Unfortunately, Tanner tapped his watch. That means we're out of time. But before I cut you loose, you get a shameless shout out or plug. So you have the mic, the camera, the lights. Yeah, I have mean, fun. Rock the Rails. We're back again next year. Uh, I think we said June fifth and sixth, twenty twenty-five. We've already got it booked. We're coming back, no matter what. We're gonna make it happen. Uh, picking the same weekend. Snow yeah. was an anomaly. Yeah. It's, it's not happening again. We'll nope. we'll put in all of our good karma until then. Yeah. Uh, and then personally, yeah, I got my uh, Fort McMurray Food Festival, July nineteenth, twenty-sixth. 27th, I should say, and then September 5th and 6th, First Responders Golf Tournament comes back for CMHA. If you want to be a part of that, you want to sponsor, you want to be on a team, you want to golf, give me a shout out. You know how to get, get a hold of me. There we go. Awesome. Well, Fort McMurray with Buffalo, the rest of the world, that's been another episode of the Max City Morning Show. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for tuning in. Big shout out to our title sponsor, Neural Toyota, as well as Carrie from Patchouli Rose and the beautiful people at Coldwell Banker. And, and, a, big, oh, go on, yeah. and a big shout out to Black Horse Pub for hosting us today. Go to go. Thanks, there Lance. Thanks, T.